How, how can you assure you're going to be on, on you know, faith that can intervene on your way to go to, you know, work tomorrow? Age, age wasn't, you know, the idea that I'm too old. Did you ever watch the debate afterwards? I don't think I did, no. He doesn't think he did? By the way, I'm proud to be, as I said, the first vice president, first black woman, mm -hmm. served with a black president. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of the, of the first black woman in the Supreme Court. There's just so much that we can do because together, we, there's nothing. Look, this is the United States of America. More and more examples of President Joe Biden having difficulty just simply communicating are piling up. Compilations like the one that you just saw aired on CNN and voters are obviously concerned about this. Democratic lawmakers are privately very concerned about Biden's impact on not only the presidential election, but down ballot races. Just that most of them are too cowardly to say a damn thing publicly or to urge him to step down and allow someone more competitive to run in the general race. But now, if you're wondering how likely it is that Biden will lose to Trump in the general election, I think maybe, maybe we should take a look at how the Republican Party is behaving as all of this is playing out. Because they absolutely want Biden to remain in the race. So let's check in with them. Starting with this headline from the Washington Post titled, Trump advisors hope Biden stays in the race as they eye alternate scenarios. After dismissing suggestions the president could withdraw, the Trump campaign is beginning to consider having to tweak its message. Now in that piece, they write that the Heritage Foundation is already planning to mount legal fights should the Democrats replace Joe Biden with someone else. You wanna know why they would do that? I wonder why. Is it because they know that Biden is definitely gonna lose to Donald Trump and they want him to remain in the race? So in the post, they write that lawyers at the right wing Heritage Foundation researched ballot access laws in all 50 states to be prepared to oppose any effort to remove or replace Biden after he officially becomes the Democratic nominee. So I would like to know, why is Blue MAGA helping Donald Trump win the election? Do they not care about the future of this country? Are they not concerned about Trump dismantling our democratic process? Do they not care about women's reproductive rights? I want to know why Blue MAGA is in cahoots with the Heritage Foundation. They really need to answer for this. Thanks for watching. Our audience has helped build TYT into the media giant it is today. Together, we can accomplish anything. Support our work and join us at tyt.com slash team. But let me continue. They argued in a Heritage Foundation memo that there are state laws that vary. And depending on the state, they might be able to like hone in on a state or two that might have a law that would prevent the Democratic Party from replacing Biden. Now to be clear, I don't think it would be a good idea for the Democratic Party to just like crown Biden's replacement should he drop out. I think that you could have a short primary blitz where the delegates are able to vote and decide who the best candidate is. I don't think it makes sense to just settle for Kamala Harris because she's VP. I mean, what's the point of replacing Biden if you're not gonna replace him with someone who's actually competitive? I'm not against Kamala Harris. She should definitely throw her hat in the, her name in the ring if she would like to you know, compete. But I do think that there should at least be some process to determine who the best candidate would be. Nonetheless, while the Heritage Foundation is considering legal means in preventing the Democrats from replacing Joe Biden, Republican lawmakers are considering the political means. And so they have indicated that they would attack any Democratic effort to replace Biden as an affront to Democratic primary voters and the Democratic process. Democratic primary voters? What primary? Did we have a primary? We didn't have a primary. We had a primary in 2020. Dirty games were played during that primary, but okay, Biden was the nominee after the 2020 primaries played out. We didn't have a legitimate primary race on the Democratic side for the 2024 presidential election. What primary? And 
so since the Republican Party is using that talking point, that ridiculous lie that we had a primary in 2024, perhaps Democrats who are providing cover for Biden should stop repeating that same lie. But they won't, they're gonna pretend like we had a primary even though we didn't. Now, one example of this tactic by the GOP is what Senator J.D. Vance said publicly after Biden's terrible debate performance. He said, what would be a bigger threat to democracy than taking a candidate post primary when millions of people, Democratic primary voters have already voted and try to replace him with a convention at a convention with a few hundred Democratic leaders. That is the biggest threat to democracy that's been contemplated in American government in the last few years. Actually, what I find to be an affront to American democracy is the fact that the Democratic establishment did not allow for a primary on the Democratic side this time around and provided cover for a man who said that he was only gonna run for one term and then step aside. But lied about that, totally refused to do so and is now dragging the entire party down with the help of a small portion of Democratic voters who are full blown lunatics providing cover for him. Okay, that's the reality of the situation. And I wanna know why those lunatics are in cahoots with the Heritage Foundation and Republican lawmakers like Senator J.D. Vance. They need to answer for that. By the way, while they simultaneously point fingers at people who are telling the American public the truth about Biden's vulnerabilities. and likelihood of losing the election. Now, uh, David Axelrod, in my opinion, put it best. Of course, he was a former strategist to Barack Obama, a contributor to CNN, someone that uh, Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski clearly have an issue with because they're providing cover for Biden and don't like what Axelrod has to say. But he does call it like he sees it when it comes to this issue. And he says that it sure seems Republicans want Biden to stay on the ticket. They think he's vulnerable. And they like where they're at. You can see they are not excited at all about the prospect of him leaving the race. He is absolutely right about that. There was a story a day or two ago about what Donald Trump has been up to. He's been chilling on a golf course, as he should. I would be, I would be so ecstatic if I were Donald Trump right now. If I were a member of the Republican Party, I'd be so happy. I mean, you're watching the Democratic Party melt down, and you're also watching someone who will be very easy to beat, dig his heels in and refuse to step down from the race with the help of his wife and son. And I do think it's important to just remind you all of what the data is and why it is that Republicans want Biden to stay in the race. Let's start off with some of the national polling. Here's Harry Enten on CNN doing a comparative analysis to where Biden was at in 2020 versus where he's at today. Right now, Donald Trump leads in an aggregate of national polls by about three percentage points. If you go back four years ago at this point, Joe Biden was ahead by nine points. This right now don't look anything like what we saw four years ago at this point. I then decided to take it a step further. What was Biden's worst 2020 polling position? He was ahead by four points, which basically matched what he ended up beating Donald Trump by in the national popular vote. So this three point advantage for Donald Trump is Donald Trump's best position versus Joe Biden, whether you include the polls this year or you include the polls last cycle. The idea that the polls underestimated Joe Biden last time around, simply put, does not hold any water. I mean, how do you recover from that? And it's not just about the presidential race, which is bad enough, or at least looking to be bad enough. You also have Republicans salivating over the notion of Democrats also losing the Senate. So let's talk about the down ballot races. Let's talk about congressional races and how Biden remaining the Democratic nominee is dragging all of those down ballot races to failure, to defeat. Let's watch. But the fact of the matter is you look at the national polling, the generic congressional ballot choice for USF, look at this. 
CNN poll, plus two Republican. Wall Street Journal poll, plus three Republican. Monmouth University poll, plus three Republican. Yeah, Joe Biden may be in slightly worse shape in these particular polls, but the fact is when Biden's down four, five, six points in these polls, you can only run so far ahead of Joe Biden at this particular point, at least in the race for the House. It does seem like Republicans are ahead because Donald Trump is so far ahead. What's the Senate landscape? Yeah, what's the Senate landscape? I mean, take a look here. GOP needs just a gain of one for control if Trump wins, and their path is extremely clear because their best chance for a pickup opportunity is in West Virginia. That's a very likely GOP win with, G with Joe Manchin retiring. And the best Dem pickup chance perhaps to reverse that so the GOP doesn't gain a net gain of at least one is Texas. But that's still a likely GOP win. So the fact is, if Donald Trump wins this election, the race for the Senate, for all intents and purposes in my mind, is over. Why does Blue MAGA want to help Donald Trump win the presidency and uh, Republican candidates in congressional races defeat Democrats. Why does Blue MAGA want Republicans to control the House, Senate, and the executive branch? And by the way, I mean, we know what's going on in the judiciary. So three branches of government, like dominated by conservatives. Why does Blue MAGA want that? Are they ever gonna answer that question? Or are they just gonna point fingers and blame everyone else? for refusing to gaslight the American people and Democratic voters about the reality of this whole situation. I mean, I am so tired of deluded individuals sucking the air out of every room. They should be ignored. The facts should speak for themselves. Are you loyal to this country and the future of this country? Or are you loyal to an 81 year old man who's gonna lose to Donald Trump and drag down the Democratic Party along with him? Ask yourself that question if you're still providing cover for Biden. And more importantly, I really wanna emphasize this. Serving as the President of the United States is not supposed to be a joke. And what, what is happening right now makes that role, it makes a mockery out of that role. The idea that you can have a president who is unable to think clearly, unable to function well, and everything's gonna be fine. I get it, people think, oh no, 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 I mean, you're not voting for Biden, you're voting for his cabinet. No, I don't, I'm not interested in voting for his cabinet. I want to vote for an individual who I trust to make good decisions, which clearly Biden is incapable of making good decisions because he remains in this race. But someone who also is able to appoint the correct individuals for the roles that they serve within his White House. And by the way, I mean, I look at the people he's already appointed in the State Department, people like Anthony Blinken, not a big fan. Yes, there are some good appointments. Lena Khan in the Federal Trade Commission, I'm a fan of. The NLRB, much better under Biden. But I need a president who can function. The idea that Democrats are now promoting this notion that the country can be run and led by someone with significant cognitive decline is insane to me. Absolutely insane. And it makes a mockery out of the executive branch. Thanks for watching. If you become a member, you get to watch all this ad free, except for, of course, this ad. Still, hit the join button below.